What's going on, everybody? I've got another uh, video for you tonight. I'm going to catch up the last of my mail because Monday's usually a pretty good mail day. They still work on Sunday, they just don't deliver. So, usually I get a bunch of crap on Monday, and I still have all these uh, mixed packs that I have no idea what's in them that I bought at the flea market that I haven't opened yet. And I'm getting a little antsy. I haven't ripped any actual packs of anything in, in a while. So I've got enough content to probably keep me going for a solid week. So I'm going to open what I got left tonight. Uh, you see, obviously, I'm holding my phone in front of the screen here. And I just wanted to show everybody that I have had a lot of success. It says 60 day total, but I didn't start selling anything on eBay until about two weeks ago. But uh, anyhow... Very good success. I made a video on Thanksgiving morning when I picked up those, the six packs of 2018 Tops Update on clearance at Walmart for $3.98. I have sold four out of those six for about 12, 13 bucks a piece, something like that. Um, and you make a little bit on the shipping because eBay gives you a discount and blah, blah, blah. But anyhow, I'm not losing money. Obviously, I'm not going to get rich, but it does finance me buying more crap. It's nice when uh, any money that I'm spending is not actually coming out of the bank account. It's coming out of the PayPal account from stuff that I sold. I sold a uh, Allen & Ginter super short print. Andrew McCutcheon stained glass mini. I put it on for, I don't know, I think I listed it for 30 bucks and ended up selling it for like 55, which was a concern because I probably should have listed it for more like 50 as much attention as it got. But it was, uh, it's not numbered, but it was one out of 25 and maybe I underestimated its value a little bit, but you'll get that. I used to uh, do a lot on eBay with, uh, <laughs> Believe it or not, men's clothing, shoes, jeans, whatever. Usually some high end stuff. High end meaning pole. Anyhow, long story short, I've got a lot of. I have a lot of eBay experience. I don't have a lot of card experience since 1992. So I'm just not getting back into that game. But I think I undersold myself on the Allen and Ginter. But anyhow, I've done. I've done well. Uh, I sold. A holiday box of 2018 Topps Baseball. I sold that. I think I sold that for like 25, and I paid 20 for it. But 25, and I got them for you know another extra two bucks in shipping. The big thing is I I need to get some some money going. I can't just spend and not get any returns on it. So I've been focusing on that a little bit. I mean, I haven't gone all out by any means. I'm not putting lots of cards together or anything like that, but I think that's probably the next step. All right, I'll quit uh, babbling and we'll get this mail opened and uh, call it a night. First off, where'd this come from? North Houston, Texas. We have got, oh, well, that makes sense. Texas. The uh, Leighton Vander Esch. Don Russ Optic Rookie Card. I love him. Although this neck injury is really <laughs> becoming a concern. I mean, the guy hasn't played in he hasn't played in a while now. And I don't like to see that man. I think he's such a kamikaze that he gets hurt. But man, can that kid play. Alright, next up, this is from Boxborough, Massachusetts. Again, I have no idea what's in these cars. I don't know what's been delivered and what's not. Obviously, this is another, uh, another card I bought when I was on my Leighton Vander Esch kick last week. Oh, geez. I gotta watch. I guess I should probably watch through the camera so I know where I'm holding the cards. Uh, 2018 Panini Prism Football. I mean, I guess just, I hate these rookie card things, by the way. I'll take it out of this and put it in a fresh top loader, and I'll use the rookie card one for one of my older cards, like one of my 1990 freaking garbage rookie cards, because I think that's what 
those top loaders look like. For some reason, I don't know, they just remind me of old junky cards. It's in the way of the card. I don't like that. I can't believe those actually cost more than a blank one. Anyhow, enough of my rookie card top loader rant. Leighton Vander Esch, he's a stud. Prism cards, they're sweet. That's all I got for you. And Prism cards are sweet, man. I know it's all the hype and blah, 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 but they are, they're cool. Knocking my whole set around. Oh, for God's sake. All right. Uh, this one here is coming from Eugene, Oregon. Don't know what I got in here. Hey, another thing I do with the stuff I sell on eBay, and this may seem incredibly just cheap, but <laughs> as much crap as I get and as many uh, padded envelopes and stuff as what I get in the mail, I recycle these things, man. Why am I going to go out <laughs> with the profit margins being what they are dealing with the cards that I deal with? I mean, I'm, I'm doing some budget work here. <laughs> So yeah, I uh, cut every corner I possibly can, and I will save this, I'll save all of these, print a new label, tape them all up good, and use those to send out the stuff I'm selling. I mean, it's saving me three bucks, but it's not like the margins doing what I'm doing here are, are real big, dealing with Leighton Van Der Esch's and the like. How many high dollar cards coming across this, uh, this desk? All right, we got a graded card. Oh, this one's actually cool as hell. I got this card for six bucks. I need to remember, you know what I need to do is fix my damn camera. I'm sorry, I should have had this ready before I started the video. This is why I only got 13 subscribers. I can't get my shit straight. Anyhow, there we go. 1967 Tops Carl Yastrzemski. Bought the card for six bucks. Now, I got the card for six bucks because it's graded at a 1.5. But for six bucks, I don't give a rat's ass. I told you, I love the slab, number one. I love the old cards. I mean, this has creases in it. But, I mean, look at this card. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well worth six bucks. I mean, it's just cheaper than a pack of smokes. Not that I know that. From what I hear, they can be quite expensive. And I can have this pretty much forever. No one's ever going to want it because it's creased and garbage, but it's awesome. I got it for $6, and I love it. 1967 Tops Carl Yastrzemski. PSA graded at a 1.5. You can see the creases but I don't care it's awesome that's my oldest Yastrzemski card now too I'll have to go through and look I know I've got a few from the 70s and I know I have at least a couple from the 80s but anyhow yeah I like uh, I'm all about the Yastrzemskis lately <laughs> Mike and Carl I guess everyone is. probably Carl's probably had an uptick in popularity since Mike started doing what he's doing. That being said, I don't know. I was out of the hobby, so maybe Carl never lost any popularity, and Mike's riding his coattails. I am really pulling for Mike Yastrzemski to have a, a big year, or at least a solid year, prove he's a major league player. I invested very heavily in his Topps rookie card. Well, in him in general. I mean, I'm really hoping for big things. I own him on my Dynasty Fantasy Baseball team. I mean, everything would be just... My world would be better if Mike Yastrzemski can just be a solid Major League Baseball player. That being said, other than what he did on the field last year in the Major Leagues... There's been no signs of him. He shouldn't have been able to do what he did. He hadn't done it up to this point. If this is a juice ball thing, you know, that's something people got to remember too. There's a whole lot of guys that hit 30 home runs last year, but the ball was different. Are they going to go back into the lab at Rawlings and reconfigure it again? I don't know. I mean, I think that uh, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> 
I think the game's interesting when the ball flies around like it did last year. You didn't have guys hitting 70 home runs. I was pretty happy with where the ball was. The pitchers aren't. I don't know, but you know, a guy like Cattell Marte may go from a 30 home run guy to a 18 home run guy real quick if he loses 10 feet off of it. Anyhow, enough of my rant about the ball. Next piece of mail. Another graded card. 1992 Upper Deck Alonzo Morning. I'm not a huge Alonzo Morning fan. It's not why I got this card. I got this card because I got this card for cheap. <laughs> No other way to put it. I'm sure I, I I would have to look it up to know exactly, but I paid four or five bucks for this card. Graded at a PSA 8, but it's an Alonzo Morning Rookie. Okay? Now I never need to purchase another Alonzo Morning card for as long as I live. I own a graded Alonzo Morning Rookie card, and I'll never buy another. So there you go. He's one of the great players from my decade. Or my... I don't know if that terminology is correct. But anyhow, hey, there you go. Look, two padded envelopes. And then I will... Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm not sure exactly where I left off, but I'm pretty sure I got the uh, Alonzo Morning open before the video cut off. I was out of space. I've been deleting the videos after I upload them to YouTube, but I haven't been emptying my deleted folder and blah, blah, blah. So... Luckily, I know how to use iMovie well enough to put two videos together. That's why it fades in and out so nice. That's uh, what iMovie has done for me. I forgot I had you here, Ralph. Sorry, bud. Sorry, right, folks. If you didn't watch my last Through the Mail Return video, you missed the great Ralph Sampson sending a little something extra. So, anyhow, two pieces of mail left to open. We're going to crack them open. They feel like they're both, uh, I think they're both graded cards. People put a cool little sticker. Again, when I open these, I'm very careful to open them so that I can repackage or use the envelopes to repackage stuff that I saw. Oh, this is cool. I paid more for this than what I usually pay for cards. Definitely. Now, when I say that, I believe I paid seven bucks. And I know, defensive, nobody's worth anything but quarterbacks, basically. A little bit of wide receiver, a little bit of running back. Definitely not a defensive end. But, this is Joey Bosa. He is a Buckeye. This is a PSA rated, PSA graded, Gem Mint 10. 2016 Donruss rated rookie Joey Bosa card. This is the only Gem Mint, well, the only PSA graded Gem Mint card that I, I own. In my mind, I have many Gem Mint cards. I'm just yet to get them graded. And hopefully I never will because I don't want to ruin. But, yeah, anyhow. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. I was so taken aback by Joey's mustache. So, yeah, that is awesome. A 2016 Donruss rated rookie, Gem Mint 10, Joey Bosa. Um, you know, for a defensive end, he's pretty high profile. He's got a, people know who he is. He makes big plays. If you wa ever watch it, the Chargers play, he's making plays. He's got his brother in the NFL also, Nick Bosa, who plays for the 49ers. So that is going to do nothing but help keep the name out there. I don't know. I mean, I know you... And it's not a big investment. I mean, I'm telling you, I think I have seven, eight bucks into that card. Um, but if you're going to invest in... Uh, it doesn't cost anything, man. It's cheap. It's Joey Bosa. He's a Buckeye. That's the other thing, too. Being located where I am in Ohio, if I ever became angry at Bosa or he went to the Steelers and I had to get rid of him, I'll be able to do that because he's a Buckeye. So... Here's another one I actually paid, I think, $8 for this. But, I guess just like every other fool out there, I shouldn't say that, but 
I bought into the hype, and I still buy into the hype. I mean, I, I was on to Strasburg before the World Series, and I was one of the people that was picking them up before the prices went up. But then for some reason, the prices went up, and I just kept right on buying him. But I do love him. 2010 Topps Chrome, Steven Strasburg rookie card, Beckett graded at an 8.5. 8.5. I do like the way the Beckett grading. You see how that rolls? They, and it's not every card. I'm not sure exactly how all this works yet. It's not every card, but it. Uh, I think they pay a little bit extra, or it's a certain type of grading that they get where they tell you exactly what's what. And if nothing else, I said this in my last video. If nothing else, you know, this card's an eight and a half. It's always going to have. Well, as long as Strasburg continues to be Strasburg, it'll it'll keep value, it'll it'll gain in value, but it's not going to gain proportionate with what a gem mint ten or a Beckett nine and a half even would is going to be worth. This is going to take a lot. It's just never going to get to that level because it's just not. Huh, you can see my reflection in it too. It's kind of like my first face reveal. It's a good looking slab. Anyhow, uh. Yeah, 2010 Topps Chrome, Steven Strasburg rookie card, Beckett graded at an 8.5. I think centering's an 8, net edges are a 9.5, corners are a 9.5, and the surface is an 8.5. And again, when I say it's, I did not spend big money on this card in any way, shape, or form. I bought this card for, I think, 8 bucks. I was happy with the price I got the card for. But at the end of the day, it's only ever going to have so much value because it is just a lowly eight and a half. It's also a Beckett graded card, which if you watch my videos, you know I'm more of a PSA guy. But when I see a good deal on a Beckett card, I mean, I these are pretty darn cool too. <laughs> All right, quick recap, and then we'll uh, end it. We got the Strasburg Rookie. We got the Alonzo Morning. PSA graded rookie card, upper deck rookie card. We've got our 67 tops, Carl Yastrzemski, PSA graded at a buck and a half, but I don't care because it's awesome and it only costs six bucks. It's like a gallon and a half of gas. I'll drive a little bit less this week, but I'll always have Carl. We got the 2016 Donruss rated rookie Joey Bosa rookie card PSA graded at a gem mint 10 by far my highest graded card probably and I'm gonna have anytime soon we've got the Donruss optic Leighton Vander Esch rookie card we got Ralph Sampson falling over easy Ralph and we've got the 2018 Panini Prism Leighton Vander Esch rookie card and that's all she wrote for this video. Um, I guarantee when I add both of them together, it's going to be way longer than what I want it to be, but I get to rambling and feel like uh, I've got such important things to say. Anyhow, uh, we're going to wrap this up. I will definitely be back. I'm off. Uh, I work tomorrow night, then I'm off the next two days, so I'm sure I'll have some content coming out there. Soon I'm going to start ripping these little babies, these little mixed 25-cent packs. If nothing else, hopefully I'll get some cards that I can uh, send out for through the mail autograph returns. I've got that. Um, I should have a decent amount of stuff coming to the mail this week. Hopefully you guys think it's cool, because I do. Um, and that's all she wrote. I will talk to you soon. Peace!